Welcome back. Kind of an amazing night. Washington for the last 24 hours discussing impeachment, indictment, multiple indictments, all of the speculation flowing from a story that broke last night on BuzzFeed, a website famous for its cat videos, wading into the political realm with the piece claiming that Donald Trump ordered his personal lawyer, Michael Cohen, to lie under oath to Congress. That, of course, would be a felony. That would be obstruction of justice. That would be grounds for, in fact, impeachment. Tonight, right before we went on the air, in a move that has v really no precedent at all, Robert Mueller's office, which never comments on anything, issued a statement unbidden saying, in effect, the BuzzFeed story is wrong. Now we have a response from BuzzFeed. This is from the editor, Ben Smith, who's been a guest on this show, the person who put the now famous discredited dossier into circulation. He says this, in response to the statement tonight from the special counsel spokesman, we stand by our reporting and the sources who informed it, and we urge the special counsel to make clear what he's disputing. In other words, Ben Smith is saying, let Robert Mueller correct our story. Does perhaps the onus lie with Ben Smith and BuzzFeed to make certain that what they reported last night is accurate? It sounds like it is not accurate. We'll find out whether their sources uh, were telling the truth in the coming days. In the meantime, Terry Churchy was Deputy Assistant Director of the Counterterrorism Division of the FBI, and he joins us tonight. Terry, we originally asked you to come on tonight to talk uh, about border security, but before we do, I want to ask you your response to this back and forth between BuzzFeed and the special counsel's office. What's your take? Sure, Tucker. Well, I'm a, I'm a skeptic because of being in law enforcement, but I think it's kind of pretty simple. When you take uh, the election and you take the House and you uh, now convert all the committees that you have to investigating various aspects of the president of the United States, then uh, your lifeblood has to be to react to stories. So you're going to see more stories planted so that all these committees can have uh, right. uh, a lot of work to do. And I, I think this is just more of the same. And I think we can expect more of this because, um, quite honestly, uh, the electorate in some places is putting more and more progressives and self-described socialist in positions. And uh, ironically, uh, years ago when I first got into the FBI, one of the missions of the FBI in its counterintelligence efforts was to try and keep these people out of government. Why? Because we would end up with massive dysfunction and massive disinformation and massive misinformation. And it seems to me that's where we're at today. Uh, I'm glad I don't live in D.C. I don't know yeah. how you start to separate this and make make head or tails from it, but it's a mess. I mean, look, if you believe in socialism, if you've got some program you want to impose in the country, tell us what it is. Explain us how you, how you think it works. Make the case for it. But these people are so stupid and so emotional, so overwrought, that they think that the key to running the country is an endless series of gotcha stories, criminalizing political disagreement. I mean, it's 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 the least straightforward way to run a government, I would I would say. So let me just ask you uh, about the original topic that we want to talk to you about tonight, and that's border security. So you heard the new Speaker of the House say the other day that she, in, in place of a physical wall, would like some sort of high-tech, non-physical, sort of quasi-magical wall, a digital wall on the border, um, and that that would be more effective somehow than an actual wall. Do you think that's true? And why do you think she's saying that? Well, first of all, I don't think that's true, but I think it's pretty easy why she's saying that. And in fact, I'll say this. If Donald Trump called Nancy Pelosi tonight and said, look, why don't you give me $5 billion for a, a technological wall along our border? She'd say, now, you know, we could probably start talking about that. And the, and the reason is simple. Uh, the Democratic Party is simply owned by the uh, technocrats in Silicon Valley. I worked in Palo Alto. I worked counterintelligence and, uh, and uh, terrorism there and had all kinds of contacts many years ago with Silicon Valley. And you could see this developing then. The Silicon Valley depends upon cheap labor. They, they love the B-1 visa program. Uh, the Lawrence Livermore National Lab, this is a national entity. They liked the B-1 visa program, and they were making no bones about it in meetings we had. They would, they would say, look, we can get people cheaper than having to, to bring in young American kids who we just don't think are as good of scientists. Well, that's baloney, I think. But uh, they own uh, the Democrats, and the Democrats, in turn, have to do things for them. I mean, take a look at just every symptom and every indicator, whether it's Elon Musk and the fact that he's a billionaire because of all of his government contracts and right. all of his ideas the government funds, or Solyndra, 
or the fact that President Obama and Hillary Clinton and Dianne Feinstein and all of these people, they have a solid march out to Silicon Valley's dinners and thousand of plate lunches and all of these other things. They have to deliver in return. The Silicon Valley for the Democrats is the new union. People scratch their head and wonder, why don't, why, what have the Democrats done? Why did they abandon some of the Midwestern states and the people they used to represent? Well, because they have no money anymore. The Silicon Valley has the money. And quite honestly, now they're pumping this ideology into some of the people that they're helping get elected. It's very, very dangerous because the Silicon Valley, totally other topic, is completely wrapped around the axle of intelligence services, from the Chinese to the Russians, uh, even to our friends, uh, some of the friendly nations. Uh, the French said it best one time, uh, a number of years ago, they said, look, sure, we're friends of the United States, but we have our own interest, and we will rely on dealing with our interest and make sure that we take care of those before our friendship. And that's, uh, that's pretty much how all of these places look at it. I think you're, when it comes I, to your, I've never heard anybody say what you just said, Pushing a digital solution to everything is, in effect, a payoff to their campaign contributors. But now that you say it out loud, it's so clearly true that I hope you will remember, keep Tucker, saying it. I, I want to. And remember something. Uh, when you put all this technology in, the government loves to buy it. One or two years later, it all needs to be replaced with the, the latest, best upgrades. It's exactly. a constant billion, <laughs> billion dollar <laughs> enterprise. We've been scammed for 20 years yes, by big have. tech, and it's just dawning on us. It's unbelievable. Yeah, exactly. Terry Turchi, yeah, exactly. you, were, you were the cutting edge of that. For sure, you figured that out first. Great to see you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Tucker.